Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Cora. Thanks for calling, Angel, but I'll have to take a rain check. Mm-hmm. Tonight I'm tied up with a guy who fell so hard for a girl, he never got up again. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Invisible Thug. Case of the Invisible Thug. It's early Sunday in New York when terrified Vera Castro fumbles with the key to her apartment with shaking fingers. Finally, she locates the keyhole, unlocks the door, and enters. Hello, dear. You... Vera, what's the matter with you? It's Pete. Pete? Pete Lloyd? Yes, yes, I just saw him. What's he doing in New York? I don't know, but he's here. Did he see you? Well, I'm not sure. I... Ernie, he did see me. There he is. What do we do? Who is it? Ask me, Rashino's. It's him. Aren't you going to open the door for an old friend? Ernie, we've got to get out of here. Oh, it's two floors to the street. Looks like I'm going to have to invite myself in, then. He's trying to break in. Ernie, do something. He'll kill us. I know he will. Pete, Pete, please leave us alone. Stop shaking, baby. I'm not going to touch you. I wouldn't dirty my hands. It's your husband I come to see. Put away the gun, Lloyd. Hey, funny boy. What do you want? Yeah, Castro, what do I want? You run off with my girl. Yes, what do I want? Well, you don't want me. You just said so. Yeah, I don't want you. Not now. All I want is payment. And I'm taking it. We don't have much. You're living. That's much. No, Pete. Shut up, you're Please. Shut up. All right, Castro. Lloyd. Lloyd, listen, give me a chance. Don't. Yeah? Oh, hello. My name's Pete Lloyd. I'm looking for Mike Waring, the detective. Oh, you found him. Oh, good. I want to hire you to do a job for me. In that case, come in. Right. I want to be sure I have the right boy, though. You are the one they call the Falcon, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I try to find your office. Don't you have one? Don't even have a trench coat. Hope I'm not making a mistake hiring you. You already made a mistake, or you wouldn't be needing a detective. I suppose you tell me about it. Well, Waring, I pick up the paper this morning, and what do you think I say? I don't know. Fair and warmer? It says I'm wanted for murder. For murder? Well, nothing like starting the day off on a cheery note. I used to go with a girl in Pittsburgh. We break up, and she marries a guy named Castro. Mm-hmm. Well, last night, somebody shoots Castro. Vera, that's the girl, tells the cops it was me. <laughs> How do you like that? I like it fine. Huh? Well, it brought me a client. Uh, you have an alibi, no doubt. Well, I wasn't even in town. That's how come the law hasn't picked me up yet. Uh, well, it's going to pick you up. What? I'm not shielding you. Oh, no, no, sure not worrying. You know, I'll give myself up. They can't hang this on me. Only, I wanted to hire you first. Mm -hmm. You got to prove I didn't do it. I suppose I prove you did. I'll take my chances. Oh, fair enough. 
I'll work on it. Add 50 a day in expenses. Yeah, sure, sure. But I can't figure. Why'd Vera do a thing like this to me? Why? Well, maybe she killed Castro. Thought you'd make a good patsy. Hey, okay, let go. Take that back, Waring. Huh? Vera wouldn't kill nobody. Not Vera. You're not going to say... All right, me. chum, but let's call off the dance. I said let go. She didn't do it, Waring. I know, Vera. All right, all right. You didn't do it. Vera didn't do it. Nobody did it. But the guy's dead. I'm sorry, Waring. It's kind of edgy. You don't say. The paper says it happened fast. Maybe Vera didn't get a good look. Maybe she really thinks it was me. I don't know. Well, there's one way to find out. Yeah? Yeah, I'll ask Vera. Of course I'm sure, Mr. Waring. It was Pete Lloyd. I know it. There can't be any mistake about it. I saw the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I talked to Pete. I begged him to listen to reason, but he wouldn't. He uh, tells me you used to carry a gun. Well, yes, I had a night job. A girl out late, you know. Yeah, sure, I know. You still have the gun? No, I sold it when I got married. Lord well, told me you uh, used to hide the gun in the blue urn you had in the living room table. Is this the urn? I told you that I sold the gun, so yeah, sure why you did, do you... But uh, you kept the urn after you married, and... Well, what's this? Wait a minute. I never saw that before. That's not the gun I used to have. How can you be so sure? You've hardly even looked at it. But I don't have the gun you anymore. You have this. It was in the urn. Pete must have put it there. Right under your nose? I fainted when he shot Ernie. He must have put it there while I was unconscious. Did you tell the police about fainting? No. Well, something new has been added. Well, it didn't seem important. I told them what I saw. That's what mattered. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm being framed. Don't you know that? Pete hired you just to find that gun. He was furious when I quit him and married Ernie Castro. He never got over it. So he killed Ernie, and he's trying to put the blame on me. Well, I hate to be unflattering, Vera, but I'm not sold on Pete Lloyd's mad passion for you. But it's true. Well, it's convenient for hooking Lloyd. But I happen to know that instead of crying in his beer because he was jilted, he's been booking a chick who has what it takes to make a man forget even you, Angel. And I know that Pete killed Ernie. I saw him do it, and he said that it was on account of me. All right, Vera. You don't believe me, do you? I don't believe anybody. In my business, betting on dishonesty is the best policy. And you think I killed Ernie? Did I say that? Well, what reason would I have? How about Georgie Richards? What? Pete Lloyd says you were sort of interested in Richards. Pete says, Pete says. It seems that he's been making quite a study of me. I thought he just found me. Well, people knew Pete used to go with you. They've told him things. Oh, Mr. Waring, can't you see that he's just crazy jealous? Any man I ever spoke to is going to make something of. Yes, I know Georgie Richards, but I'm not interested in him. He was interested in me, but I didn't want to have anything to do with him. Oh. Now, look. I loved Ernie, and that is the truth. Georgie Richards is just like Pete. Anything to make a buck. Gambling, stealing, whatnot. Well, I'm through with that sort. All they mean is trouble. Well, some people like trouble. I've had my fill. And now, if that is all, Mr. Waring... Yes, for now... Goodbye, Vera. Goodbye. I'll show him. Hello. Georgie Richards, please. Thomas action soon in the Triangle murder case. Pete Lloyd, sweetheart of Vera Castro, and accused by her of the murder of her husband, surrendered to the police early today. He was grilled for hours, but the police were unable to shake his story, and he was released. It is believed, however, that he had gave some important information, which, if confirmed, may lead to an arrest. The nature of... <laughs> It'll be confirmed. The Falcon will see to that. <laughs> Tell me something, Pete. Yes, sir, Kay. What do you want to know? Did you kill Ernie Castro? Well, you heard what the man said, didn't you? Police couldn't shake my story. He couldn't shake it. You didn't answer my question. Now, stop worrying. They can't pin this on me. I'm not worried about that. I just want to know, is there blood on my hands? All right, Kay, look at him. Look at him. I just want to know, do you still have a case on Vera? That's all over, all over. I told you. I wonder. Baby. Come here. I don't care what you do, Pete. I don't care how many men you kill, but not for another woman. Will you woman. cut that out? I told you I'm through with Vera. 
All I want from her is for her to get what's coming to her. You hate her. I hate her. Well, that means you're still interested. Oh, oh, I don't know. Hello. Hello, Pete. Vera. Yes, your address was in the newspaper. What does she want? Pete, I've got to see you. Can you come over here right away? Why? I'll explain when I see you. It's important. All right, Vera, I'll be over. You're not going to see her. The heat's on. She's squirming. I want to see her square. No, Pete. Forget her. Will you shut up? Pete, listen to I me. I said shut up. My, my lips bleeding. Here's a handkerchief. Now get out of my way, will you? Come on in, Pete. Yeah, sure, baby, sure. And now, Vera? Why don't you come on over here? Sit down beside me. Sure, why not? <laughs> That's it, Vera. Turn on the glamour. <laughs> See how far it gets you. All right, Pete. Isn't it enough that you killed Ernie? Can't you leave me alone? Leave you alone? You asked me over. It was your idea. I mean the gun. And hiring Mike Waring. Telling him there's something between me and Georgie Richards. You're trying to put the blame on me for Ernie's murder. Like you tried to put it on me. Well, could we make a deal? If I change my story? <laughs> Couldn't we make a deal? <laughs> All right, laugh. Just laugh. <laughs> but you had your chance. Remember that. I'll remember. I'll prove you killed Ernie. Is that a fact? Because you did kill him. You did, you did. Relax, You baby. killed him. You're a murderer. How many times are you going to say that? Until you admit it. What's to admit? I killed him. You know that, I know it. But if you expect I'm going to admit it to anyone else... What are you grinning about? You were. What is it? Why did you make me... The other room. You got somebody in the other room, haven't you? Oh, 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 you heard me. Answer me. The other room. Maybe the law, huh? Will you answer me? Please, stop me. Well, I'll find out. Hey, you come back here. (laughs) Well, what do you know? Georgie Richards, huh? Let's go. (laughs) So this is your witness, Vera. Some witness. Well, what are you going to do? What am I going to huh? do? <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. Vera oh. thinks your word's going to help her. <laughs> she punk like you. Oh. Then for a minute she had me worried. Leave him alone, Pete. Sure, baby, sure. I wouldn't think of messing up, pretty boy. All I'm trying to figure... Just what were you trying to pull here anyway? Nothing. Well, that's all it's going to amount to. You can bet on that. Just a great big zero. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Pete Lloyd was tricked by Vera Castro into revealing his guilt in front of a third party. Now in Mike Waring's combination apartment office. Hello? Is this the Falcon? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Well, this is Vera Castro. Oh, yes, Angel. I'm glad you called. Just got a report on the gun. It's the murder weapon, all right. Oh, so now you're sure I killed Ernie. I didn't say that. Not in so many words. Well, it's not important. What do you want? An apology. When I see proof. I have proof. Positive proof. That Pete Lloyd killed Ernie. That's why I phoned. Oh? If you will meet me at police headquarters in half an hour, I'll show it to you. You will see that... Ow! Vera. Hello. Hello. Who is it? Me, Mike Waring. All right, all right. Just a second. Hello, Mr. Waring. Come on in. Uh, what happened to you, Angel? I got knocked out. Mm-hmm. And that proof you were talking about? Gone. <laughs> Surprise. You don't believe me, do you? You think I just faked the whole thing? Well, it does look phony. As phony as the gun in the urn. Oh, then you realize that was a plan. No, I didn't say that. I just said it looked like it. But you never can tell. Uh, just what was the proof you were supposed to have had? A tape recording of a conversation between me and Pete Lloyd. How'd you get it? Well, I remembered that Georgie Richards had a tape recorder, so I called him. I thought Richards was nothing but trouble. You weren't going to have anything to do with him. I needed his machine. Uh-huh. You don't believe me, do you? 
You think there's something more to it? Look, why are you so concerned about what I believe? I don't know. All right, anyway, you made a recording. Yes, I did. Georgie hid the microphone under the pillows on the sofa. I got Pete to admit that he killed Ernie, and we got it on the tape. And then when he left, I called you. Mm-hmm. But Pete must have figured out that something was wrong, because he came back, heard me talking to you, and knocked me out. How about Richards? What about him? Was he here when you phoned me? No, he'd gone too. Oh, too bad. He might have seen. But he was here when we made the recording. He'll tell you. Yes, I'm sure he will. But I'd rather hear what Pete Lloyd has to say about it, so let's go, shall we? <laughs> What are you going to say to Pete, Mr. Waring? Oh, just check his story against yours, Vera. And look, don't you think it's about time you started calling me Mike? Could be. Well, here's his floor. Except that you're still working for him. <gasps> What's that? I think that came from Lloyd's apartment. Is the door locked? Yeah, I'm going to break it in. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I think someone's coming. Yeah. Well, hello, Angel. What happened? <laughs> it's, it's Pete. Where is he? Right there. On the floor. Oh, Mike! I see him, Angel. Oh, no wonder she screamed. Is he dead? Yes, Vera. Somebody knifed him. He's very dead. Mike, don't you think we should have stayed back there with Kay until the police came? No, I didn't want to waste time. I'll check back. All right, get in. Well, 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 what's the hurry? Where are we going? To see Georgie Richards. You said you wouldn't take his word. No, I won't. Well, then why? Now you'll see. Mike. Yeah? I didn't kill Pete. Mm-hmm. You don't believe me. <laughs> I wish you'd believe me. Uh, where does Richards live? Oh. Clyburn apartment. But I still don't understand. Look, you borrowed his recording machine. Now it's my turn, that's all. Well, what do you want it for? You didn't notice me pick this up at Lloyd's, did you? What's that? The tape! A tape. Whether it's the tape remains to be seen. It was lying on the floor. Well, that must be it. Well, we'll see. And if it is... Will you help me? If it is, will you need help? Well, it'll prove that I didn't kill Ernie, but I may be accused of Pete's murder. So will you prove that I didn't kill him? You want to hire me, Angel? Yes. Well, I just lost one client, so I'm available. But considering what happened to that client, maybe you'd better think it over. Here's Richard's apartment, 205. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on in there? Well, it sounded like something fell over. Yeah, there goes some more. Must be a free-for-all. Come on, open up. What do we do? Well, I just guess I'll have to... Wait a minute, it stopped. I was just about to break it in. Yeah. Anybody coming? No, I don't think so. Maybe they couldn't hear me during the fight. I'll try again. I wonder what that was all about. I wouldn't know. Seems we're always butting into something. Well, uh, hello, I... Mike, 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 well, I get him into this chair. Close the door, Vera. All right. Well, I don't see anybody else in the apartment, Mike. But look, everything's all upside down. He's gone the window. Who was it, Richards? I don't know. Big guy. I never saw him before. What was he doing here? When he was searching the apartment, he had all the drawers out. I came in, caught him, and, and right away he started swinging. Uh-huh. Say, Vera, go in the kitchen, see if there's some ice in the refrigerator. Hey, what's that for? <laughs> you should see your face, chum. It's all out of shape. Huh? And that shiner is a honey. Mm. Well, we patch you up, and then I want to try your recording machine, okay? Huh. I'll prove you killed Ernie. Is that a fact? Because you did kill him. You did. You did. Relax, baby. You killed him. You're a murderer. How many times are you going to say that? Until you admit it. What's to admit? I killed him. You know that, I know it. But if you expect I'm going to admit it to anyone else... Well, Mike? What are you grinning about? Well, I guess that does it. Now you see that I've been telling the truth. All right, Vera, Lloyd killed your husband. But who killed Lloyd? Well, that's what you're supposed to find out. Well, maybe it's the character who beat up on me. Yeah, maybe so, Richards. What did he look like? Well, it's a big guy. Yeah, so you said. Blonde, straight hair. You had a pushed-in nose. Mm -hmm. Go on. A rugged jaw. He looked sort of like an ex-bug. Mm -hmm. How was he dressed? We had a gray pinstripe suit, a blue shirt, a deli, dirty yellow tie, a two-toned shoes. Oh, and yeah, his uh, his belt buckle. What about it? It was initialed uh, J.H. J.H., huh? Well, now we're getting somewhere. You think you know who it is, Mike? I think I know where I can find out. Where? Phone book. The phone book? Yes, I'm not the only private detective in town. 
I'll try all the J.H.'s till I land our boy. You think he's a detective? I think it's worth a try. This case is tightly knit. You, Vera, K. I don't see an outsider fitting in. Unless he was working for one of you. So a detective looks like a good bet. You could be right, Mike. No, well, sure, Angel. Why so surprised? <laughs> Come on, I'll take you home, then I'll go to work on it. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Ten minutes have passed, and the Falcon is fulfilling his promise to drop Vera at her house on his way to solving the case. Oh, so long, Vera. I'll let you know how I make out. All right, Mike. Good night. Oh! I've been waiting for you, sister. Hey, stop it! Tear your eyes out. You'll have to tear out mine first, Kate. That's a good idea. Come on, come on, break it up. Break it up! She killed me. She killed him, and now I'm gonna kill her. You're not gonna do anything. Oh, you, you, you're breaking my arm. Let go of her, let go of her. Uh, all right. You all right, Vera? Uh, yeah. Good, now you, Kay, no use making like a maniac. That won't help anything. You don't understand. I loved him. Yeah, sure, well, everyone to his taste. Why, you, ow. I don't like to hurt oh. you, Kay, but I can't let you go till you calm down. Oh. Now, come on, Kay, you better go with me. So long, Vera. Goodbye. Sorry if I hurt you, Kay. I don't like to rough a lady, but you haven't exactly been a lady, Angel. Now, come on. Rotten, thanks. And belligerent? No. Tired. Well, that's an improvement. Where do we go from here? You go home, I go to work. I see. Yes, and you stay home. If I don't? You'd just be wasting your time. I'm phoning Vera to keep her door locked until I get back. Oh, you're going back? Uh Uh-huh, as soon as I nail J.H. Who's J.H.? He's the key to this case. And you know where to find him? I know where not to find him, and under the circumstances, that'll be just as good. Oh. Oh. Hello, Waring. Did you find J.H.? I have a lead on him, Richards. Oh, good. Come in and tell me, huh? Yeah. If you uh, saw him again, Richards, could you identify him? Sure. Well, maybe I can arrange it. But I want to be sure I'm not making a mistake. Now, uh, you said he's a big guy. Well, at least 6'2". Mm-hmm. Now, how'd you say he was dressed? Pinstripe suit, gray. Gray? Thought you said it was brown. Did I? I'm pretty sure you did. Vera will remember it. Yeah, well, wait, wait a minute. Hmm? Yeah, that's right. I, it was brown. Brown pinstripe, I forgot. Mm-hmm. You should have kept notes, Richards. Oh, so I made a mistake. Yeah, it's a big mistake. Because you did say gray before. Well, okay, then. I told you. Yeah, sure. And you switched when I bluffed. Because you weren't sure. Because you weren't describing J.H. from memory. You were describing him off the cuff because there isn't any J.H. Are you nuts? Well, it's been so rumored, but verification is lacking. You think I busted my face out of shape like this myself? No. Well, I think Pete Lloyd busted it for Lloyd. you. Lloyd? Yeah, when you tried to blackmail him. What are you talking about? After you and Vera made the tape, you returned to Vera. As you conquer, you swiped the tape and tried to blackmail Lloyd with it. He offered to pay, but when you produced the tape, he made a grab for it. There was a fight, and you knifed him. I suppose you can prove that. Now, come on down to police headquarters, and I'll show you. Well, I have a better idea. Oh, I'm glad you decided to put up a fight. It gives me a chance no. to strike your other eye. Oh, no, you don't. No, I thought so. The knife. Come on, let's go. Let's yeah, go. Sure, when you drop that knife, no. go ahead, drop it. All right, all right. There. Yeah. Thought if we got in a fight, you'd pull that knife again. Uh, I have an idea the police lab will find specks of dried blood on it. Lloyd's blood. Uh, That's the trouble with playing with knives, Richards. You're likely to get stuck. For a detective who operates out of his hat, you do all right, Mike. Oh, shh. What's the matter? It's bad enough my setup isn't according to Hoyle, but on top of that, do you realize the awful faux pas I pulled on this particular case? No, what? I went all through this case without once getting knocked out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's right. I took the lumps for you. Uh-huh. Well, don't you worry. I won't breathe it to a soul. That's my girl. Hey, but I know one way we can keep from being too unorthodox. What's that, Angel? Well, right now I can ask you, how did you know that Georgie Richards was the murderer? Oh, well, that uh, business with J.H. 
The only time Richard saw that stranger was when they were struggling. Yet he gave me a perfect description. Yeah, but what was the purpose of creating the mythical J.H. anyway? To explain Richard's shiner. Richard's killed Lloyd in a fight. The fight left marks on him. He had to explain them away, so when we arrived at his place, he staged the sound effects of battle and invented J.H. to account for the condition of his face. I see. And I pretended to go along with the gag to give him time to forget some details. Well, he did, and that's it. And now you see that I didn't have anything to do with either of the murders. You didn't want to believe that at first. Oh, what gave you that idea? I could tell by the look in your eyes. You mean you can tell what I'm thinking by just looking in my eyes? That's right. Well, can you tell what I'm thinking now, Angel? I certainly can. Good night, Mike. <laughs> Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Connie, I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some boy I know is thinking of taking up murder for a career. Yeah, he figures with all the money involved, the least he can do is make a stab at it. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Happy Hoodlum. Friends, before we join the Falcon for his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you how you can have sandwiches and snacks and appetizers and salad toppings more easily and quickly than ever. Just make them with any of the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. Kraft cheese spreads are so smooth and easy to spread, and they're so good eating. There are creamy, mild-tasting ones and sharp-tasting varieties, too, all simply delicious. And, of course, all are of the finest quality because they are made by Kraft, a name that's been famous for years for top-quality foods. Try them, won't you? Tomorrow, get several of these handy, delicious Kraft cheese spreads. And now, the case of the happy hoodlum. It's late afternoon in New York, and a tall, thin man with a dirty trench coat walks up the steps of the Revere building. His name is Marty Kramer. Mr. Kramer has embarked on a mission where the chances are a million to one against him. Apparently, that doesn't bother him. He smiles as he takes the elevator down to the basement where the Revere Express Company has its headquarters. Then, still smiling, he marches down the hall to a door marked employees only and barges right in. Hey, just a second there, mister. Yeah? You don't work here. Do you? Yes. Good, then maybe you can help me out. Where do they keep the dough around here? Are you crazy? Don't tell me the stories I heard about this place aren't true. I saw a piece in the Sunday paper that said you always have two or three million on tap. Now, look, mister. Now, you look, friend, because I got a little more than you have. That's right. It's a gun. And if you don't want a practical demonstration of how it works, you better take me to where they keep the dough. Okay. You're the doctor. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? You said you wanted to go into the bullion room, didn't you? That's right. Well, I've got to get my pass. They won't let me in without it. Where is it? In that drawer. Okay. Open it slowly. And don't put your hand in there until I can see what you're doing. Hold it. What's that? Oh, that? Why, that's the signal for one of the drivers that a bank wants him for a pickup. You wouldn't try to kid me, would you, friend? So help me. It's the truth. All right. Where's your pass? Right here. Now, which way do we go? Uh, Down the hall. Okay, let's move. Say, uh... Tell me something, mister. Yeah? That piece you read in the paper. What about it? Did it tell you how many armed guards we have in the joint? 68, wasn't it? That's right. And you expect to pick up an odd million and walk out without anyone bothering you. I'm doing it, ain't I? You haven't got the million yet. Just give me time, pal. Where do we go now? Uh, In here. That's where they get the shipments ready for the trucks. Okay, open the door. Now, don't forget, I'm right behind you. And I'm right behind you, mister. What? Just drop the gun, pally. You got him, Paul? Yeah, I got him. All right, Barney. 
Fish game. Right. You don't have to do that. I'm clean. I know, but we don't believe in taking chances. I can see that. That drawer you opened was connected with an alarm, wasn't it? That's right. Real cute. What's your name, mister? Marty Kramer. You escaped from some lunatic asylum? You didn't think for a minute you'd walk in here and heist this place? Well, I guess I was over-optimistic, hmm? You're over something. Now, look, Kramer. What do you got up your sleeve? Not a thing. Ask your friend. He just frisked me. Don't be a wise guy. You're on a spot. So it would seem, wouldn't it? I don't get your angle. Angle? Yeah. You knew darn well you didn't have a prayer of getting away with this job. Now, why'd you do it? <laughs> As long as you put it on that basis, I'll tell you. Well? I, uh, I just wanted to prove to the kiddies that crime doesn't pay. Yeah? Oh. Hello, Mike. Sergeant Corbett. You gonna invite me in? I don't know why I should. Come on. Let me take your coat. No, thanks. I can't stay long. Oh. How about a little, um... What time is it? Five to six. You sure you're not five minutes slow? Come to think of it, I am. Good. Then I'm off duty. I'll have a short <laughs> one. <laughs> What's on your mind, Sergeant? It's funny you should ask that. Why? If there is something on my mind. Did you read about that boy named Marty Kramer? Lad who tried to heist the Revere Express Company yesterday? Yeah. How do you figure it? Simple. He's crazy. No, he isn't. He's as sane as you are, if that means anything. Well, he certainly couldn't have believed he stood a chance of walking off with the loot. No, he wanted to get caught. Why? That's what bothers me. I can't make it out. Can you? Sergeant, what are you getting at? I'd like you to look in on Kramer. Are you out of your mind? I guess I am. You know, if you do this, there won't be a dime in it for you. You must think I'm as crazy as you are. I do. What do you say, Mike? Well, if everybody's going to act nuts, I might as well get into the act, too. Okay, I'll do it. All right, Kramer. Mike Waring's here. Mike Waring? Yeah. You have ten minutes, Mike. Thanks, Mac. Wait a minute, Buster. Who sent for you? Sergeant Corbett asked me to look in on you. My name is Mike Waring. You the bird they call the Falcon? Mm -hmm. What do you want with me? Sergeant Corbett feels there's a lot more to your case than meets the eye. And I'm inclined to agree with him. Well, you're wrong. I tried to pull a job and I was caught. That's all there is to it. Uh-uh. There are too many things it leaves unexplained. Such as? Such as your background. Your name isn't really Marty Kramer. No? Then what is it? I don't know. All I could find out is that you came to New York six weeks ago. Where from, nobody seems to know. Maybe I'm ashamed of my past. I don't see why. You have no criminal record that the police can discover. This was your first offense. Always the first time for everything. Uh, well, it goes deeper than that, Kramer. You weren't hard-pressed for cash, either. Well, how do you know? I went through your room, found this bank book there. Who gave you a license to go through my stuff? The police. There's 7,000 bucks in that account. Well, maybe that wasn't enough for me. Well, you certainly couldn't hope to pick up more at the Revere Express Company. A fella can try. Yeah, I know, but you didn't have your heart in it. The DA showed me the gun they took away from you up there. Yeah? Yeah. That thing couldn't hurt a fly. The firing pin was filed all the way down. You're out of your mind, Falcon. Now, don't tell me that. I saw the gun. Well, if the pin was shot, I didn't know about it. You don't think I'd do anything as silly as that? I think you're doing something a lot sillier. Now, look, Kramer, you better start talking. Unless you level with me, they're really going to pop it to you. Why don't you mind your own business? Can I help it if I'm nosy? Well, maybe this will cure you. Oh, Mike! What's going on in there? Nothing. I'm all right, Mac. What's the idea, Kramer? I'm just settling accounts with my friend here. That was the down payment, Waring. If you insist on working for me in the future, you can expect a lot more. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. Say, I'd like to tell you how you can get compliments from the small fry. Next time the children want something to eat between meals, set out their favorite crispy crackers and a glass or two of Kraft pineapple cheese spread. One of the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. Then watch those youngsters go to it. Watch how their faces light up when they taste this delightfully mild cheese spread that's filled through and through with juicy bits of sweet sun-ripened pineapple. Mmm. -hmm. Kraft pineapple cheese spread is delicious. And it's smooth, too, for wonderfully easy spreading. 
And you know it's a snack the whole family can enjoy often. Because like all the Kraft cheese spreads, it's a wholesome dairy food made from only the finest ingredients. It's a good idea to have several glasses of Kraft cheese spreads on hand always for a grand variety of snacks. Try Kraft relish cheese spread, Kraft olive pimento cheese spread, Kraft pimento cheese spread. In fact, all nine delicious varieties. Look for them at your grocer's tomorrow. They come in bright new tulip pattern drinking glasses in a choice of four gay colors. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A week has passed since Mike Waring had his little talk with Marty Kramer. Apparently, it didn't do any good. For the next day, Kramer pleaded guilty to armed robbery and was sentenced to Sing Sing. Now, as we find him, he's making his grand entrance. Come on, Kramer. Hey, Bailey. Bailey. Uh, wake up. You got company. Uh, what's the matter? I want you to meet your new roommate. His name is Marty Kramer. Oh. Oh, hiya, pal. Hi. If there's anything you want, Mr. Kramer, just ring. We have 24-hour service here. Well, thanks a lot, McGraw, but I wouldn't think of disturbing you boys. Well, make yourself at home, Kramer. Thanks. My name's Bailey. Yeah, I know. I heard a lot about you. I've heard a couple of things about you, too. Have you? Yeah, a fellow was telling me in the yard today that a falcon was working for you. How come he couldn't get you off? Maybe I didn't want him to, Bailey. I don't dig you, pal. Maybe I wanted to spend some time up here. Why would anybody in his right mind want to do that? It's a long story. Well, that's okay. I got ten years more to save. Yeah. Want a butt? Yeah. Help yourself. Thanks. Very much. You see, um, there's a guy up here that I wanted to see. Well, you certainly took the hard way, Kramer. Well, five years ago, this guy was partners with my old man. My old man was a schnook. He trusted everybody. That was his mistake. One night, his partner cleaned him out and then put a match to the place. When the insurance dicks came over to investigate, this guy took a powder and my father was left holding the bag. Well, what happened? Well, he couldn't stand the disgrace, so he blew his brains out. Tough. Yeah. Anyway, I promised myself that I'd make it up to the old boy. And I've been looking for his partner ever since. You find him? Yep. Through a private eye. A falcon? No, another guy. He told me my party was serving time in Sing Sing. That's why I arranged to visit here. What's his party's name? Bailey. Huh? Oh, now, isn't that a coincidence? Just the same as yours. Where are you from, Bailey? Uh, Los Angeles. Well, that's funny. So was this guy I was telling you about. Cut it out, Kramer. You don't remember me, do you, friend? No. Of course, I didn't call myself Kramer in those days. Now, look, you. Stay away from me. Hey, Mac! McGraw! You're gonna going to get it, Bailey. Me? I've waited five long years for this. What? You let him go, Kramer. Right after I squeeze the life out of him. No, you don't. Uh, let me go. Come on, come on. Break it up. Cut it out to breaking my arm. Then behave. You okay, Bailey? Yeah, I think so. Leave me alone with him for one minute. One minute, that's all I ask. What you're asking for is a stiff dose of solitary. All right, Kramer. Let's go. Go away. There's nobody here. Yeah? Is that you, Mike? Who the devil is this? Now, that's no way to talk to an old friend. Well, this wouldn't be Sergeant Corbett, would it? Why not? You realize it's three o'clock in the morning? You're slow. I got a quarter after. Look, if your purpose is to annoy me, you're succeeding very well. Got a little news item I thought you might be interested in. Remember our friend, Marty Kramer? Yeah, sure. What about him? I just got word from Sing Sing. He tried to kill his cellmate, a boy named Bailey. Oh, so that's why he wanted to go to jail. What do you mean? Well, obviously, this whole idea was a plot on the part of Kramer to get his hands on Bailey. Maybe. I kind of doubt it, though. I got a hunch we haven't heard the last of our friend, Mr. Kramer. Don't ask me why. I just got a hunch. <laughs> felt, Logan. A couple of seconds more and it would have been all over. Instead, the guard had to break it up. 
How long did he keep you in solitary, Kramer? A week. Was it bad? It'll be worth it if I can get my hands on Bailey again. Forget it. There's not a chance. That's why I transferred you in here with me. I'll work it somehow. What you got against Bailey anyway? Ah, oh, never mind. Come on, I won't give you away. There's something he did to my old man five years ago. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You got the wrong guy. Oh, no, I haven't. When did you say this happened? Five years ago in L.A. Well, that proves it. Bailey's been in here since 1940. What are you trying to give me? Well, it's the truth, Kramer. Someone give you a bum steer. This ain't the same Bailey. You're lying. Okay, don't believe me, but I saw his record myself. I used to help around the warden's office when I first came here in 45. Well, that's true. I did all this for nothing. You ought to be glad you didn't kill him. I got to get out of here, Logan. You kidding? Don't you understand? This was all a mistake. That's tough, pal, but can't be helped. Let me out! Let me out! Pipe down there, Kramer, unless you want another session in solitary. I got to speak to the warden. Okay, I'll make an appointment. Cut it out, Kramer. It won't do you no good. I got to get out of here, Logan. Sure, sure. If I can't do it any other way, I'm going to make a break. Don't be a chump. I tell you, I can do it. Are you with me? You just sound enough to hear yourself talk? No, I tell you, I can do it. How? Is there anyone outside you can count on for help? No. Aren't you married? No. I got a girl in Jersey. How about her? How do you think I got in here in the first place? Uh, she squeal on you? That's what a couple of people would like me to believe. I was running the biggest gambling joint in town till Martha got friendly with Philip Hernandez. Phil Hernandez? One of my competitors. He and Martha got awful chummy. Well, that doesn't mean she sold you out. It does when you add to, to it the fact that that's how we met originally. Only this boy she fingered was some character from Chicago, and he was married to her. And the more I think of it, the more I'd like to ask Miss Martha Pierce a couple of questions. What do you say, Logan? Do you want in? What's the deal? Tonight, after roll call, one of us will pretend we're sick. When the guard comes in to investigate, we'll take care of him. With what? With this. Hey, where'd you get that hunk of lead? When I was in solitary, I noticed one of the water pipes was loose. I didn't think anyone would mind if I borrowed it. Yeah, they're bound to find out it's gone. Sure, the next time they throw someone in solitary, but that may be days. And we'll use it tonight. <laughs> comes. Start moaning. Yeah. Uh, oh. That's the ticket, pal. Keep it up. Oh. What's the trouble there? Uh, I don't know, Mac. Something's the matter with Logan. Uh, Stand back in the door, Claymer. I'm coming in. Uh, Let me get your appendicitis. Uh, Logan. Logan. Uh, Why does it hurt? Uh, right. Right here. Oh, I better get the doc. Okay, Kramer, now. What the... Hello, Martha. Philip, what are you doing here? You heard the news. What news? There was a flash on the radio at 10.30. Your ex-boyfriend, he broke out of jail. Logan? Yes, he and a man named Marty Kramer. <laughs> well, what do you know? I know we better do something. Don't tell me you're frightened, Philip. Well, there's no point in taking chances. You know the kind of guy Logan is. Suppose you leave Mr. Logan to me. But maybe he'd think I made you squeal on him. Well, didn't you? No, it was all your idea, Martha. Remember, I didn't want you to do it. Aren't you the brave boy? Well, it's your fault. I was satisfied with the way things were. But no, you had big ideas. This is the first time I heard you complain. Well, I didn't know You don't know a lot of things. Now, listen, Phil. If Logan knew about us, we would have heard from him before this. But maybe somebody tell him now. Then all he's got are suspicions. And I can talk him out of them. I've done it before. You think he is in New York already? Well, if he is, he must be with his friend Kramer. You got any idea where they can be? Maybe. Where? Never mind. What you don't know can't hurt you. Tell me where, Martha. Go, Philip. You're, you're hurting me. Where are they? Oh, you, you're going to regret that, Mr. Hernandez. I'm sorry, Martha. I, I, I didn't mean it. It's just that I worry about Logan, so... You shouldn't, Phil. I've got a feeling Mr. Logan is the least of your worries. Turn off that light. Kramer. Yeah. 
This time, Waring, I've got a gun with a perfectly good firing pin. Now turn off that light so I can come out from behind these drapes. Okay. Now stay where you are until I switch on this lamp. Just as you say. All right, sit down. How'd you get in here, Kramer? Through that fire escape window. Oh. Now listen, Waring, I gotta talk to you. You've gotta help me. You must be out of your mind. I wouldn't be surprised if you were right. I was crazy to do what I did. You mean break out of jail? No, break in. What are you raving about? I wanted them to send me to Sing Sing because there was a man named Bailey there that I thought was responsible for my father's suicide. So that's why you tried that phony holdup at the Revere Express Company, huh? Yeah. But when I got to the pen, it was the wrong guy. I realized how ridiculous the whole idea was. I could have told you that in the first place. What am I going to do, Mike? Why'd you crash out? I told you I wanted to see you. You could have sent me a letter. Oh, I was rattled. I didn't think of it. Well, you better give yourself up. No. Look, it's your only chance, Kramer. Fortunately, that guard you slugged wasn't badly hurt. What do you think they'll do to me? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. But I'd gamble you won't even have to serve out your original sentence, providing... Uh, providing what? We take Logan back with us. No, no, I won't rat on him. Don't be a fool, Kramer. Logan's dangerous. you got a record as long as your arm. Now, don't be a chump. If the positions were reversed, he'd sell you out in five minutes. Now, what do you say? Okay, Waring. Call a cab. I'll take you to him. All right, Marty. Where is he? The next floor. Whose place is it? Belongs to Logan. He owns the building. Yeah, that's pretty convenient. Does he know you went to see me? No. I told him I was going to get some grub. Hold it. This it? Yeah. You better let me go in first. I'll give you the high sign when it's okay for you to come in. Right. Logan? Logan, I'm back. Hey, Logan, where the... Waring! Yeah, what's the matter? What's the trouble? Oh, never mind, I see him. He isn't moving. A few people do when they're dead. All right, Kramer, what do you got to say for yourself? <laughs> story. Now, what am I going to do? First, you're going to get a grip on yourself. You're absolutely no help to me this way. Now, come on, help me turn him no, over. No, I can't touch him. Oh, you're the man who's going to kill for revenge. Well, I didn't know they looked like this. What did you expect? Well, judging by the signs, I'd say Logan got it around a quarter to ten. Where were you at that time? Waiting for you in your apartment. Oh. Look, Mike, how will this affect my chances on the appeal? Not a bit of everything you say stands up. Cops couldn't possibly hang this on you. Well, they could try. You got a motive? No, but... There are no buts about it. Especially if we can deliver the right party to them. Now, when you left Logan to go to my place, did he say anything about expecting anyone? No. Well, somebody must have known he was here. Someone who had a key to this dive. Now, who could that be? I don't know. Now, come on, Kramer. You must have heard Logan mention some name. No, I tell you. All he ever told me was he had a girl in Jersey. Remember her name? No. You've got to. He only mentioned her once or twice. Oh, for Pete's sake, man, think. Your life may depend on it. <sighs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, it was Martha. Martha Pierce. Phil Hernandez, girl? Who's he? Big gambler in town. Yeah, I think you're right. Logan told me this Martha dame sold him out to one of his competitors. All right, Kramer, you stay here. I'll be back as fast as I can. This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. Sounds like Kramer gave Mike a lead to the killer, doesn't it? Right now, though, I'd like to give you a lead to nine kinds of wonderful eating. That's right, I said Nine. Because I'm talking about the delicious Kraft cheese spreads that come in nine grand varieties. There are delightfully mild-tasting ones like Kraft pineapple cheese spread, Kraft relish spread, and Kraft olive pimento cheese spread. And there are sharp-tasting kinds, too, such as Kraft cheese and bacon spread, Roca brand cheese spread, and hearty Kraft Limburger cheese spread. They're all delicious, all wholesome dairy products, and all so handy for making quick, easy snacks and sandwiches. Always keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty minutes have passed since the discovery of the body of George Logan by Mike Waring and Marty Kramer. And now as we find the Falcon, he's knocking at the door of his first lead. Yes. Martha Pierce? That's right. 
I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all, honey. But if you're going to show me your brushes, you might as well come in. Well, thanks. Uh, I'm afraid I left my sample case at home. What's your name, Hanson? Mike Waring. I think I've heard that somewhere before. Could be. I'm a private detective, Miss Pierce. My friends call me Martha. Well, I'll bet you've got a thousand of them. Listen, Mr. Waring... No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take it back. You couldn't have more than 999. What's that supposed to mean? You just lost one of your best. Who? George Logan. Oh, don't tell me. Yes, he's dead. Poor Logan. I knew the excitement of breaking out would be too much for him. He had a bad heart. Yes, well, that knife someone stuck in his back didn't help matters any either. Incidentally, where can I find Philip Hernandez? You're wasting your time, honey. He isn't in New York. He took the midnight plane to Chicago. Mm, well, that must make it awfully dull for you. Mm. How have you been keeping yourself occupied? Now, come, Mr. Waring. Surely you don't suspect me of killing Logan. No, of course not. I was just curious, that's all. Well, when Phil told me about the news flash he heard about Logan breaking out, I thought it called for a celebration. So I went to the Hawk Club. Where undoubtedly you were seen by a hundred different people. At the very least. Well, that makes a very handsome alibi, Martha. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> all right, Angel, I'll be seeing you. Oh, must you go? Yes, but don't worry, I'll be back. And it may be sooner than you think. Who's there? It's all right, Kramer. It's only me, Mike Waring. Oh, just a second. How'd you make out, Waring? I didn't. You couldn't get a thing out of her? No. My girlfriend Martha's got an alibi. Claims she spent the entire evening at the Hawk Club. Well? Well, I was down there and everyone bears her out. It must have been a new boyfriend who killed Logan. No, I'm much more inclined to suspect it was her old one. Who? You. I don't understand. Oh, sure you do. You're a pretty smart boy, Kramer. That was a beautiful plan you worked out to get Logan. What are you talking about? You went up to Sing Sing to find somebody, only his name wasn't Bailey, it was Logan. That business of your old man's suicide was so much tripe. Logan took Martha away from you, and that's why you had it in for him. You got rocks in your head. If Logan was the one I was after, why didn't I kill him when we were in the same cell? Because you were sure to go to the chair. This way you felt confident you'd get away with it. The authorities up there thought Bailey was the one you were after. As far as they knew, you had no connection with Logan. It was just a coincidence that you broke out together and someone killed him. <laughs> now, you played it very smart, Kramer. Obviously, it wasn't smart enough. You caught on. Well, it wasn't your fault. Sometimes the fates conspire against you. You see, you broke out of stir at 8.30. So? So the news of the break wasn't released over the air until two hours later. The first flash came at 10.30. Well? Well, Logan was murdered at quarter to ten. Three quarters of an hour before either Martha or Phil Hernandez could possibly have known he escaped. That's where your frame fell down. It's too bad you made that mistake. We can't all be as clever as you, Waring. But speaking of bonus, you made a pretty bad one yourself. I don't see where. You shouldn't have come back here. Why not? You forget that I still have this gun. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Sergeant! What? Hi, Kramer. Don't bother turning around. Just drop the rod. Come on, drop it. Well, did you hear enough, Sergeant? Plenty. Okay, Kramer, let's be moving. I'll make this up to you, Waring. Oh, don't bother. No, I owe you plenty. You don't owe me a thing, friend. After all, if it hadn't been for you, I never would have met Martha. What? Mm -hmm. Take him away, Sergeant. I have work to do. <laughs> This is the season for hearty breakfasts, hot cakes, hot toast, hot rolls, waffles, and the spread that adds extra goodness to every bite is parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Yes, parquet is the margarine minions prefer to any other because it tastes so good, and it tastes so good because it's always fresh. In states where the law permits, get yellow parquet in its new Flavor Saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get parquet in the regular package or handy color quick bag. P A R K A Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. The case of the substitute target. The case of the substitute target. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that just because a fella has a head on his shoulders is no sign he's going to be able to keep it there. 
So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place, the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Hear Martha Ray and Jimmy Durante on The Big Show today on NBC.